Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Guess what? We're coming to you live from Harlem in New York City, and we're the Ramble with Alex. That's me until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Lori Thompson. Hi there, folk. Yeah, she, uh, my aide de camp in San Francisco on the morning show. And you didn't work anywhere else with me, did you? No, just live. No, that was the only place. That was it. Then I went after Live 105. I went to work for the Evil Empire, still at that time called Clear Channel. And uh, I, I worked for them a little later when they were. I well, we kind of worked there together. Uh, you, we went, Oh yeah, we didn't see each other. Though. They put me on yeah. doing a morning show for about six weeks while they tried to figure out what to do with their station. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I was never promised it as a permanent job. And you were working out of another studio in the same building. But we never, I never saw each other. We never saw each other. Because I was, and I was working with a, kind of a San Francisco legend like yourself, Don Blue, told you guys are totally different. Yeah. To do totally different radio. Um, but he was just such a pleasant person. Um, I didn't well, we really had different com- philosophies of radio. Exactly, and I was. And his philosophy confident. was, I want a job all the time. And my <laughs> and he got that. And, he was and mine was, I want to do radio my way. Well, guess which prevails, yeah. my way until uh, you take the highway. Well, I and I was much more comfortable with the ship with being with you on Live One Hundred Five, and Don and plus Clear Channel had you stretch so thin. You'd be doing news for like five stations. Clear I Channel is now hundreds. known as, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, Pump and I Heart Radio. And I Heart, see, I worked with in Iowa, and it was great. So I think it's very much the, lo- the local culture of the particular chain. And so uh, I worked for I Heart in Des Moines, and it was a blast. I mean, my parents both passed away like you know next to each other in two weeks i think it was or two months and uh and they were very understanding they just uh and the, the i heart was and i love my boss um but she was doing several yeah, things but those were local stations uh but we were doing we were i'd never worked at a radio station where my competitor was on the air next door right what terry mcgovern said i, I couldn't i couldn't even grab that concept it was, you know, it was just so alien to what, I mean, from the time I got into radio in 1980, uh, that was that was an alien well, concept. I, I, rem- I remember who was next door to me. I, was it Terry? No, McGovern? no, no. But a guy I came to know because we would go out during the news break at the on the hour, and we'd go out into the hallway and, and hang out there together. And, and we kept talking to each other about stuff, and I really got to like him a, a lot. Jim Lang. Oh, yeah. He was the, no, tell me, was it the dating game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he seemed, I would run into him at Stars, uh, the voiceover agency, because uh, you ran into a lot of radio people at Stars. And uh, yeah, he's all, he seems avuncular, but is he also. He was also, if I remember, very left wing. We'd talk about politics, really? yeah, and he was very left oh. wing, yeah. That now that's kind of refreshing because I love people that surprise. Well, it was me. nice to have somebody next door who had shared the same politics I did. Right, because then yeah. you could you know work out material with each other and yeah. go in. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, but Don Blue was a, a nice guy, really nice, lovely guy. person, lovely, lovely man. Person, I liked him, but a very mediocre talent. It was just an But mediocre old, but survives, so mediocre oh, always he, survives. And he was such a nice guy and so easy to work with. And I also was I was doing that T V show, it was an infomercial package like a travel show. And they needed a new host and they auditioned him and Bill uh, that was on Real People. Uh, um, uh, Bill Rafferty. Bill Rafferty. Yeah, and Rafferty did that and also there was a guy I liked on channel four. 
uh, Joe, I can't remember Joe's name either, that did sports. And uh, so they auditioned Bill, Joe, and Don Blue, and we eventually went with Doug of Mac and Muttley, who was really sweet. Mac and Muttley was a show about a guy and his dog. Right. Mac was the guy, and then Muttley was obviously the dog. Yes, I'm sorry. I can't believe I'm so unprofessional. I, my phone wasn't turned off. Uh, yeah, they did a show all over Northern California about places that you could visit with this dog and my friend Doug. And uh, Doug McGovern, I think, was Doug. Doug something. Doug Mac. something. You know, I, yeah, I, I, but I, he was a lovely guy. Really, an out, outdoorsy, kind of a little bit of a hippie. But uh, just, yeah, I was blessed to work with some good people. Yeah, they, you know, they, these were not bad people. Mm-hmm. I mean, Don Blue, as I said, was a good... Was, he's still alive, isn't he? I think so. I think he retired. He, first of oh, all... Oh, then he's a great yeah. talent. Okay, he, I'm sorry. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> he's, he has grandchildren, and home is where the grandchild is. Yeah. And so I think he moved back to Minnesota. I could be completely wrong. Yeah, but Don Blue was around for a long time. Oh, that man was venerable. The venerable Don Blue, I agree. Yeah, you know, he was in San Francisco forever. Yeah, he was very uh, mainstream, but a wonderful guy. Uh, yeah. There, my time there was not as long as his. You know, I, I was there. <laughs> he for, had I was there for about eleven years with Live One Hundred and Five. Before that, I was with the Quake for about what a year, year and a half. Like See, that. now, I didn't know you much. And then and before that, I was with KMAL, so maybe my time in, in and, and with uh, 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 CNET, maybe my time in San Francisco was 20 years. Dom Blue, I think, has been around for 40. Who? Was, Dom Blue was around for like 40 oh, years, I 50 think years. So. I think so. Yeah. It would be so hard to find a reason to fire Dom. You know, you can't just, um, I think what they don't mention is I think, especially a clear channel and iHeart as it is now, I think they're ageist. Very, I think they're, uh, I can, that's my opinion, um, but I, they tend to have ageist policies when it comes to firing people. Who, uh, or letting them go, putting mean, them out to pass. iHeart? Uh, I won't say iHeart, but when I worked for them there, it was well, clear channel. You know, when I worked at Sirius XM, Mm-hmm. And they finally fired me after nine years. All right, mm-hmm. they brought me into their office and they said, "Well, here's your uh, here's what you're going to get as your severance." And it was like sixteen weeks of pay. What? I was oh, there man. for nine years, sixteen weeks. Are you out of your mind? Yeah, because CBS gave me a year when they bought Live One Hundred Five. Now, okay, <laughs> which is enough rope to hang myself. Yeah, but I mean yeah. that that's okay. If they gave me a year. I thought would have thought that was okay. And they said, and by the way, we want you to sign this thing before we can give you your severance. Non compete. Nope. Disclosure. But I wouldn't sue them for ageism. <gasps> You're kidding. Oh my gosh! And I said, you realize what you're asking me to sign is ageist. Yeah. And they went. What did they say? Well, if you don't sign it, we're not giving you your severance. That's it. They got you know. So I signed it, knowing that if I wanted to sue them, I could I could prevail on some level. Just because I signed this thing doesn't mean I give up my rights in that respect. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But. and, and and a lot of people felt it was ageist. You know, I was seventy five when they got rid of me. That's ageist. Yeah. yeah, but you know, the, the reason I went, in fact, with the uh, station in Mississippi, is they were paying more decently than a lot of places, and they it was a morning anchor position for the statewide network, and but I was fifty seven, and I thought I better take this because I'm not going to get offers the way I used to, you know, at 57. And right. they took, I worked there for a year. It was such a bad fit. They were ultra white right wing to the point where we were told not to report certain stories. And I just said, this, this isn't news. And I made no bones about it. And I was very lippy <laughs> and anti-authoritarian. So I was glad we parted ways. Wow. Wow. Yeah. But that was the worst fit I've ever had in radio. Usually I can morph. But this just seemed patently wrong. And 
The yeah. only person I know at Sirius who's probably older than I was and was still doing a show was Cousin Brucey, Bruce Morrow. Bruce, oh, wow. And he has a built-in audience from the old days. Yeah, radio but I always before. considered him the height of mediocrity. And here was the best part of it. He had the studio. He only used it. They only had him do a show once a week or something. But he plastered the entire studio with photographs of his history. <laughs> well, PR, man. You and learn. here's the one thing you don't do when you're putting up photographs of your history. When you're wearing a terrible hairpiece to begin with, you don't show pictures of your hair receding. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you know? And they were up that's all like, over the place. You could see, oh yeah, that's Don when he first started. This is Don when he was losing his hair a little more. This is Don when he was losing his hair more. Oh, here's da da Don with his hair piece. Yeah, see, that's it. Like Another example of that. Um, Kenny Rogers wrote an autobiography, and in it, pictures, 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 not mentioning anything about his plastic surgery, the botched plastic surgery. And so you're looking through the pictures and go, who's that guy? That's Kenny Rogers after his surgery. And in none of the text does he even allude to it. And it's the weirdest thing ever. I can't believe an editor didn't step in and say. Let me, let me tell you a story. I worked in Houston, Texas. There was a guy who was the, they had these promo guys for all the record companies. And, yes. and, and each, each city had their own, I mean, you know, maybe they did two cities. Maybe they did Houston and they went up and did Dallas as well. Yeah. Um, but the, the promotion guy for Capital was a guy by the name of Wayne Rogers. And was that his brother? Well, he used to have his little brother go out and get us sandwiches and things like that. <laughs> he ran, ran, you know, what Gopher. do you call it? Uh, Gophers? Went on runs for us for coffee and donuts and things like that. And, and that was Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny that that, 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 that would be Kenny. Um, and so, yeah, he, I had nothing against Kenny Rogers. He did some great duets. Well, you know, I saw like, him on television finally as a recording artist. And I went, is that Wayne's brother, Kenny? Yeah. He had a show with a band called The First Edition right. and called Rolling on the River, and it was syndicated, and I was an adolescence, but you, you couldn't find it that often because it was syndicated, so it was scheduled kind of oddly. But yeah, that, that band wasn't bad either, and uh, that for a country band. His music, and, his music overall was pretty mediocre. It was very mediocre. His, I like his duets in a sappy sort but, of way. You know something? Mediocre makes money. Yeah, and that's the that is so we've become such a bottom line society that we are destined. We are now shackled to mediocrity. Yeah. Because oh, mediocr you can, mediocrity will last forever. People, oh, yeah. people will survive uh, you, being mediocre. You don't risk people boycotting your advertisers. Um, see, none of that. Mediocrity is being rewarded, and so is impatience in this culture. I mean, there are a few times when it isn't rewarded, where, where people refuse to be mediocre and they do well. One that comes to mind is David Letterman. Yes, David Letterman, yeah. you could never accuse Letterman of being mediocre. No, I mean, he but, was a unique animal. But you could accuse Leno of being mediocre, and who had the ratings? Yeah, exactly. Pandering you know, to that middle section, not middle America. Yeah, because we there's some sharp people in Middle America. Uh, yeah, that's that's why it's another thing. Um, it's kind of like the auto tune of comedy. You know, people get getting like this Matt Rife fellow getting specials or getting popularity because of his Kennedy jaw. And uh, he has a joke. I couldn't kill myself. I couldn't by hanging because my jawline would cut the rope. You know, so <laughs> he is. And there's something else that trended comedy that that tried and true comics don't like it because there's no writing to it it's where the somebody just comes out starts riffing with the audience or gets heckled and then they start building a career on how they there's a word for it i can't remember on how they handle hecklers so they put that on their social media and it gets some gigs yeah yeah but it, you know i mean uh i mean i've known mediocre comics that you know make it big and the guys who aren't mediocre don't we've known them 
you know. Yeah. Guys yes, like Jeremy Kramer, for instance. Yes. <laughs> now, one that I thought was edgy that we've talked about many times, but did pretty well is Kevin Meany. Um, he Kevin was, Meany. Uh, Kevin Meany somehow, I don't know how, managed to make a name for himself. Mm-hmm. And because he was hilarious and so unique. He and was then, so he was so hilarious. I don't know. You remember this? He would come on the show. He'd start going to one of his rants, uh -huh. which was kind of repeating the same thing over and over and over and over and over right. and over and over. Right. His again. ex or his uh, yeah and romance. I, at a certain point, I'd have to ask him, beg him to stop because my stomach was hurting. Yeah. I was you, laughing so hard. Now, a lot of those comics, though, that weren't headliners in San Francisco went down and did very well as writers in Los Angeles. There was that mass exodus from San Francisco in the, I want to say, early mid-90s. There's and, a guy, I'm starting, trying to remember his name now. He's a regular on my show, and he wound up uh, working for Chuck Lorre and writing and directing episodes of Big Bang Theory, Two and a Half Men, Really? Uh, young Sheldon, well, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. I read the credits all the time because I always see someone that used to be on the show. And yeah, I, just I, like, I wish <laughs> I could remember his name right now. But he, he did, oh, he did, uh, what was that show uh, uh, with the kid and his parents and the father? <laughs> you know, one of 25 sitcoms. Yeah, one of 25,000 of them. Uh, mm -hmm. But. Uh, um. You know. But Alex Reed has done well. Alex Reed did well as a writer. Alex Reed, that's who I was thinking of. Yeah, and I saw him accept an Emmy. And this was not long after, uh, I might have been still living in San Francisco. I was working there. Yeah, Alex Reed, did, he was not a headliner, and but he no, did he great He was a very writing. good comic. I liked him a lot. Nice guy. Yeah, Everything funny. went down to Hollywood. Uh, it but, probably has a million, millions of dollars. Okay. Oh, yeah. I would think so, yeah. And uh, you have to wish them well. And they found their niche. Well, yeah. Sue Murphy, I think, is now, you know, she produces a lot for Wanda Sykes, or used to. And, I think she uh, lives with Wanda Sykes. Oh, really? This I, I think so. Know. Yep, I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> so I shouldn't ask her I out. may be wrong. <laughs> Sue me, Sue. <laughs> no, she was, I, I always Sue liked one day, Sue M Murphy, people don't know, really know who we're talking about unless they listen to us in San Francisco, was a comedian who for some reason one day decided she hated me. Just, and how did this how I don't know how, what, I don't know, I didn't do anything, I was always good to her, you know, and yeah, yet all of a sudden talking. one day I was the enemy. I, yeah, I don't remember that. That happens all. occasionally with comics. Well, we would do a thing called All Gal Radio, which was Sue Murphy and then uh, Linda Hill and uh, Sue Healy. Yeah, and we, that was you so were all fun. on together. Yeah, we would call it All Girl Radio. Yeah, yeah. It, and it, and uh, but uh, I never understood that. You know, I never understood uh, 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 Goldthwaite, uh, how he suddenly turned on me. Yeah, unless you saw it yourself, Ben. Don't believe anything you hear. Uh, what's it, Marvin Gaye line? Believe half well, of what you say. Well, yet. you know, I mean, I, I just, uh, I, I, I've told this story before that I was doing these HBO one night stands, doing the yeah. warm up and stuff. Yeah. And Don't being worry. a consultant on them. <laughs> and uh, uh, Goldthwaite was doing one of these shows, one of the half hours. So I go, okay. Uh, so he's, I go backstage just to say hello to Goldthwait. I hadn't seen him in a while because he went to LA, nice. became a star, blah, 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 blah. So you're yada, 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 right? And so I go in to say hello to him and he go, Alex, great to see you. Boy, we've been a long time. Yeah, it sure has, Bob. Wow, congratulations on all the success. You deserve it. Oh, thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. I say goodbye to him. He leaves, goes on stage, and the first 10 minutes of his act is doing nothing but putting me down. Did he sit, mention you by name? Yes. Wow, that's hard. That's now, it never tip. made it into the final cut of the show because no. the, the, the producers went, what's this about? Who, 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 who's gonna know? We know who Alex Bennett is. He did the warm up, you know, but yeah. uh, you know, that's about it. No, he was doing 15, 10, 15 minutes on me. Just See, I, right, and I'm going, 
what did I do to him between leaving his dressing room and him <laughs> going on stage? Let's look at the closed caption. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the other thing is uh, believing things you hear. Something has poisoned the well with my sister. And we were getting along fine mm -hmm. until I moved to Mississippi. And then all of a sudden, I don't know, it was somebody in our town said something um, to her that was compared us and you know and she didn't like it uh i have no idea because that's why i don't believe stuff i hear it can it can poison families it can poison friendships well i've never understood that you know but i i think there is a point at which some comics not all but some comics don't want to feel that anybody's responsible for helping their career except themselves you think and so they deny bigger. anybody who who tried to help them along the way you know yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, fame makes you assholes, you know. Uh, so. Not all. Yeah. I then, think empathy. And then there are <laughs> comics who come back to me, and uh, I got, remember this was many years ago. I got a call from Pat Oswalt. Yeah. 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 And see, I think the difference is empathy, man. Yeah. Remembering where we came and he from. Said, he said, I'm, I'm, playing, I'm playing the uh, such and such theater tonight. I'm doing an HBO one night stand. I'd never be where I am without you. And see, I just and wanted that, to phone, as long as I was in San Francisco, I wanted to phone and thank you. See, and you remember those incidents all your life well, um, it, because they're so refreshing. And, and I have said to him, no, you're responsible for your own career, but I'm glad I had a little bit of a part in it, you know? Yeah, for and, him to it. And very that. nice of him, he didn't have to do that. No, it's it, just, I think appreciation and empathy creates different people from from the same situations. Yeah. Uh, and those empathy is probably one of our biggest duties in this life and biggest privileges. But of all the people that I that I knew, comics I knew, the one if you had to ask me, who do you think is going to make it big? I would have listed a whole bunch of names. But Patton wouldn't be on that list. Patton would be on be my list. Be, Dana Gould. Well, no, be because on his his act was so different and so off the cuff and non-definable that I didn't think he would become huge. I, I, I remember when he was on the show for the first time, and he said, and I thought this guy's gonna go far, because he said, I mean, because do I look like Adam Rich, fake, fresh out of detox, or what? And he did at the time. Looked like that kid from Age is Enough, yeah. the youngest boy, and I just thought it was hilarious. I mean, I'm like, happy he made it, because he, he had to persevere, because his comedy wasn't run-of-the-mill comedy. It was, that's what it was. And that's so why, I precisely why I liked him and had him on the show all the time. Because I like yeah. comics who weren't, you know, when being mediocre was, in order to make it. You know? <laughs> yeah, but edginess these days is just because of advertising boycotts and social media. I'll never media. forget that kindness or Robert Schimmel, who, when I was out of yeah. work, would call me and say, I just want to call and see how you were doing since I know you don't have a show right now. And if you want to, I'd like to take you out to dinner and blah, 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 blah. And I, I, he did that every time he came to town. I see. That's that's what. That's like someone who. And then who he was, had to hit a tree in a car. Jeez, yeah, thanks you know. a lot, Bob. <laughs> but the, it's, it's almost like, you know, the girl in high school who um, who is fat and a wallflower and nobody pays her any mind. And then over summer, she becomes she loses weight and becomes this hottie. And she remembers the people that wouldn't give her the time of day. Exactly. And now that everybody's exactly. clamoring on her. She's like, she still knows. I was yeah. always very nice to those women. And you know something? After they got beautiful and gorgeous, they wouldn't talk to me. So anyway. <laughs> but, you know, I think that, that you just got to remember, keep in mind who you are, and empathy will never fail you. Don't let it make well, you a I doormat. Just, I, I just, uh, you know, people. some people are nice and some people aren't, you know. And some people are going through shit. shit. I have to forget that we can swear on this. Yeah. yeah some people are just going through a patch. It, and if they don't like themselves and they don't like the world, and then they, you know, they'll well, come out. Well, I, 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 after this happened a couple of times, what happened with Goldthwait, I just said, I don't have to, I don't have to take it personally. It's just something that happens. You know? What were those three agreements? Don't um, don't take anything personally. Don't keep your word. I do keep your word, and always do your best. The three agreements. It was a big book 
um, probably 25 years ago. Yeah, and those were the three, the three agreements that you could do a lot worse than that is your philosophy and, and blueprint for life. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, now that I'm late in life, I'm trying to figure out where my career went wrong. <laughs> you are bored. <laughs> Actually, I well, uh, the other day I thought about it and I went, actually, I've been pretty lucky. Yeah. You know, I've had a pretty good career. You had a real good career, man. Yeah. You know, uh, far better than I ever thought it was. Uh, you know, so, no, I, 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 I figured I've been lucky. You know, there have been things where I shouldn't have been working at, at all anymore. And something would happen and I would be working. Yeah, it's the serendipity of life. And yeah. luck, maybe, perseverance, probably. Being yeah. mediocre, well, I would have been more successful if I was mediocre. <laughs> we don't know that either. Hey, yeah. I love you, dear. I love talking to you. I appreciate the fact you even give me the time of day. So. Are you kidding? <laughs> I love you. I'm, you're my heart. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's that, that there. Wait a minute. There. I know how to do this now. That there is Lori <laughs> Thompson. What a clever boy. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Thompson. <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, bye bye. Now, in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. And let me see here. There we go. There we are. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just trying to. It's it, when we come back after a weekend, it's. Uh, I got to do this, and I got to do that, and I got to make this happen and make that happen, and well, you know, just make things happen. Anyway, we got some people waiting here. There's a couple of people, but uh, enough to get a a show going. Uh, let me see here. Uh, oh yeah, okay, this looks pretty good. We got uh, we got uh, we got Kevin is here. Well, he's out somewhere. Yeah. And uh, let me see here. Uh, and uh, let's see, where are we? Also, we have uh, Josh. Hello, Josh. Hello. And hello to Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hey. 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 Uh, and let me admit uh, uh, Jeff uh, Stein here. There we go. See? We're starting to get people in here. And uh, I don't know, should I do my earphones or should I listen to you through the speakers? I'll, I'll do my, I'll, I'll put on my earphones and uh, talk with you. Okay, there we go. Hey, everybody, how are you? Good. Okay. I'm alive. Yeah, well, we have, uh, we have you guys uh, here um, on, uh, on a Monday. We've got uh, Josh, which is unusual. Today's Monday? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Be at work. I'll, I'll see you. Uh, see you around, folks. And two attendance points, man. No yeah, call, yeah. no show. You know, I'm out of it today. I don't know what it is, but I was trying to get some things done here, and and it was just simple stuff, you know, on the computer, and I couldn't figure out how to do it. Oops, I got a call. Sorry. <laughs> well, who is it? Be at work. <laughs> What? Oh, Charlie, he's 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 on. He's uh, got to take his call. Okay, well he'll be back. Hello, Kevin. How are you? Okay. How are you? Mm. I'm okay. I'm okay. As I say, today I've just been a little on the, the fritzy side. I don't understand it, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, it. Uh, uh, because I, I was trying to figure out how to do some things. I can't even remember what it was, and I couldn't figure it out. It was something very simple. I just had to go here to find this that was there, you know. Well, anyway, here we are, and we're all together. Uh, uh, Jeff, how, how was your weekend? Boy, it, it was beautiful today. And then it started raining like crazy. Yeah, well, it was beautiful, uh, I guess, up there. I don't know. It's just been hot down here. You <clears throat> it know, was hot. Last couple of days, just really hot. <clears throat> uh, we got in the pool. Huh? Was, we got in the pool. You got in the pool? Yeah. I didn't know. I don't didn't know you have a pool. Well, it's not mine personally, but oh, oh, it's a pool. Live. 
You you have to pay for it. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Is it? Do you live in a a group of homes that have a common pool? Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and like a club clubhouse and stuff. Yeah. Like that. By the way, here comes Ray, and I hope this is Ray uh, Renati. But let me just make mm -hmm. sure that it is. Let me turn my. Uh, there we go. Uh, Hello, okay. uh, oh, everybody. Hide? No, don't. You don't have to hide. Oh, you have to hide your eyes. Yeah, there's Ray. Okay, all right. Okay, that's Ray. Hello, Ray. Hey, Alex. How mm -hmm. you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? Good. Um, you know, right. I'm. I'm trying. I'm getting by. Oh, I'm, that's good. I'm slowly. I was mentioning I'm slowly losing my mind, but outside of that, I'm okay. You know. Mm. Well, that's a that's something to be grateful for. Yeah. So is everybody ready for tomorrow's big yes big debate? I'm it's like the Super Bowl. I almost don't want to watch it. Uh and the reason is they've been so hyping it. You know, I mean they started last week talking about well how do you think it's going to turn out? Who do you think has the advantage and how do you think Biden is going to do against Trump and how do you think Trump is going to do against Biden, and what are the odds on this? And so, and I'm just getting so for sick of it. For a week. For a week. You know, come on. It's just a goddamn debate. And that was something, well, we did do them. Did we do them years ago? Uh, I don't remember when I was growing up debates. Uh, but, uh, you know, here here comes uh, Steve Fox. I think it's got to be Steve Fox. Because well, the first one on TV was yeah, Nixon and Kennedy, right? What, Nixon and Kennedy, yeah, that yeah. I remember on TV. And I don't remember, do we have any on radio? I know we had the Lincoln-Douglas debates. <laughs> I remember those. Well, I don't remember them. <laughs> Maybe I do, and I don't remember remembering them. I don't know. But and the Lincoln Douglas debates, but that wasn't a presidential debate, was it, uh, Josh? Uh, Lincoln Douglas? Yeah. No, it was for the uh, Senate in Illinois. Yeah. So. Had, 1858. So yeah. it was, uh, Lincoln ran for president. Well, there are all there are all these things that we do that everybody goes, oh, oh, we got we got to do them. You know, the debates. Why aren't we doing a debate? Why aren't we doing two debates or three debates? Mm -hmm. We didn't used to have debates. We didn't used to have primaries, yeah. okay? I mean, all of this is a modern affectation that has been thought up by people who want to make money, like the TV networks, you know, these various... Yeah, I've, I've always not really cared for the commission on presidential debates. Yeah. You know, the people who have put these on over the years, uh, but they're not this one, you know, because the candidates went outside the commission. Mm-hmm. Uh, this time, and you know, the commission was complaining about it, and their president wasn't very happy, and and it's like, it. I mean, two people have the right to debate anytime they want, and if a television network wants to put it on TV, they're allowed. I mean, every. I mean, there's this is not the law here. It's it's they can do whatever they want, you know, and the. <laughs> I mean, the commission had a lot to say about it, and other people have had, but look, if two people want to agree to meet at a place and time, and they can set the rules, however, you know, I mean, the guy who goes over can get, you know, green slime poured on his head if that's what they want to agree to. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's just, you know, it was just like RFK Jr. going around saying how wrong it was that he wasn't there, and how people could go to jail for it and all that, and it's like... I mean, well, the reason you were go down to Jim Bob's bar and do this if they wanted. Well, there's a good reason why he wasn't invited. I mean, what kind of a following does J, uh, does uh, J, RFK is it RFK Jr. have? Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, I'm hopeful I didn't say the wrong name, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if, you know, I wish I could say that he, you know, he really had a following and he should be in there, but no. He, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying is they, they've always had this commission yeah. on presidential debates and they would set up a couple and they would set the criteria for who could get in and, you know, like the rules and all that. But I mean, it's like finally a couple of candidates said, well, why do we need these clowns to run our, you know, we can meet anytime, anywhere and set our own rules. 
and that's fine, you know. And I mean, Trump can go around, as <clears throat> you already have, complaining about the rules, but it's like they're the rules that you agreed to. I mean, if you don't want to show up, then don't show up. You haven't had a problem doing that in the past. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't understand, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, why this is such a big deal. Uh, I mean, uh, what, is is the entire election going to be well, hanging on this? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, if you listen yeah. to certain people, media or whoever, there are a lot of people that think, you know, that there are a ton of those people out there that don't like Biden and they don't like Trump and they'd really rather not vote for Trump but they have this nervousness that Biden, you know, will gets lost on his way to the bathroom or whatever. And if he can show up for a couple of hours and not fall asleep and forget his name or something like that, they'll say, oh, oh, yeah, he's really not that bad. Like they say, uh, that's better than Trump. I'm good to go now. I mean, well, that seems Trump to be is worried. Trump is worried that he isn't going to be doddering. And that he isn't going to be falling out, and he's going to yeah. be able to go the the hour and a half without fumfering or whatever. And yeah. so already he's saying he's on drugs. Yeah, that's their. And and they yeah. they kind of changed it today from drugs to Mountain Dew. <laughs> Mountain Dew. Because Mountain. of the caffeine. Mountain Dew. <laughs> okay. Well, you know. You know. Yeah, that was the State of the Union thing. You know, was he was a bumbling he's idiot. Up. And, there's no way he could give a speech for that long. He'll fall asleep. Oh no! They they said he was. He does they, a good job. You know, it was obviously because he was. They all, said he was yeah. probably on Hunter's Coke. Yeah, it was on Coke. That's what they said. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, to which I say, so what? Yeah. Still, I mean, I'm silly. I don't even care if he is. I mean, if, if you know. Yeah, you, there are plenty of genius people that have existed in the world, uh, functional drug addicts and alcoholics that were far better on stuff than they were off stuff. So if that's what it takes to get the greatness out of somebody, then, you know, whatever. Well, you hey, know, Sigmund Freud was a Coke addict. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it, he wasn't a Coke addict. He was no. a Coke user. He was a Coke user, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I used Coke like crazy for years, and I was never addicted to it. Some of it's uh, hereditary. I had a friend who used Coke so much and he got so addicted that he had a heart attack. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Died. would any way have written as well as he did if he wasn't drunk all the time? Probably yeah. not. Well, I mean, but the... the Hemingway. <laughs> oh, Hemingway, what was he on? He was drunk. He was an oh, alcoholic. Was drunk. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big drunk. Yeah. yeah, well, a lot of those writers were alcoholics. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, look, I'm not saying go do this. I'm just saying if their point was, well, he can only perform because uh, he's on drugs. Well, then send him, you know. Great. If he performs drugs. Well, then give him all the drugs <laughs> he wants. But, you know, uh, one of the things, what was it Trump said in a speech a couple of days ago was, hmm. uh, oh, well, there are hundreds of pounds of cocaine at the White House. <laughs> I heard him say that. He, in the he said a hundred a pound, hundred hundreds of pounds, right? Hundreds of pounds of yeah. cocaine at the White House. <laughs> well, in that one corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's but it's covered up with classified documents. You know. They, yeah. Right. right. Exactly. He just says whatever pops into his head, whatever bullshit. Well, no. Pops what he does head. is before a debate, he tries to lower your expectations. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I so, really couldn't have any lower expectations for Trump than I already do, but, I mean, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, first of all, we've got Biden, who's taking this very seriously. He's been hunkered down at Camp David. And a log cabin. Sleeping. In a log cabin. Sleeping, according to Trump. Uh, Napping. Uh, and he's been having mock debates, and he's been practicing and getting up on all his information so that he can, off the top of his head, say it. And uh, meanwhile, what is Trump doing? I don't know. He's like having a happy fizzies party down at uh, Mar-a-Lago or something. But he's not really practicing for it, thinking, oh, I can just, I can just, you know. Wing it. Wing, wing it. it. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm sorry. You can't just wing something like that, you know. And uh, so if he comes off bad, 
he's going to say, well, that's because uh, Biden was on Coke, you know, or Mountain Dew and Coke. Right. Which, you know. like I said, to which I say. Hey, mm -hmm. if, if it takes cocaine oh, for you to do the best job as president, hey, here's my straw. You know, mm -hmm. I mean. <laughs> they asked him on what, Fox what he was doing to prepare, and he said, well, I've, I've been preparing my whole life, really, actually. That's what mm -hmm. I said about doing a radio show, but, you know, I, I'm not running for president. <laughs> I, yes, I Steve, I mean, Steve Fox is here, by the way, the, the voice of GabNet. Uh, hello, Please Steve. How are you? I'm doing good. Yeah, really good. Yeah, How it's been a while. Voice it is. It's been a while. You've been busy. Uh yeah, yeah, pretty busy. Yeah. So now that everything's calmed down, but everything's okay. So here's my question to you in regards to this uh, debate that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Microphones are going to be turned off on each yes. side. Yeah. Yes. Is that really going to happen? Yes. Yes, it's I mean, really going to happen, but nobody says that Trump has to stop talking. <laughs> See, that's, that's the point. And so it's going to be a distraction. It, yes. We, yeah, we won't hear him, but Biden still will. Yeah. 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 Biden still will. Yeah, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if he keeps talking, uh, even though the mics are turned off, it's going to be a distraction to Biden. It's, and it's going to be rude, of course. You know. Right. Yeah. Well, he said he's going to be rude. I heard him say he's going to be mean and rude. What, Trump said that? He says he's going to be mean. What is this, a wrestling match? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, what is this, a wrestling match? No. Is it reality TV? Well, it shouldn't be, but I guess that's what it is. You know. Yep. He's a star. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, you know, I mean, uh, but... He's lowered everybody's expectations about what if he doesn't win this debate or he doesn't come off well in this debate, it's because Biden was on drugs. <laughs> and, Mountain you know, Dew. Biden, they both have to stand for the whole thing. 90 minutes, 90 yeah. minutes, which, you know, for Biden is a little difficult because I noticed that he what he has is he has, I think, neuropathy. Uh, he walks like he has neuropathy. Yeah, he does. Okay. Uh, and so standing for that long for him might be difficult. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean he can't be a good president. So if he right. wants to sit, I don't think they have stools there. Um, but if he wants to sit, he should be allowed to sit. Uh, if, uh, if this were FDR doing this He today, was in a wheelchair. Most, yeah, they wouldn't say, well, I'm sorry, you have to stand up. You can't be in that damn wheelchair. What? You know, he couldn't stand up. No, no. Kennedy had trouble too at, at the end there, uh, before he was oh, killed. St Kennedy had problems because of his back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a bad, a terrible back. He had a In lot of fact, troubles. Standing. I interviewed uh, Blaze Star, who was a stripper, uh, whose um, um, boyfriend was uh, what's his name, the governor of Louisiana, uh, not. Uh, not Yui Long, but his son. Hmm. Um, and um, I interviewed her. And uh, she was taken to the White House to meet up with uh, Kennedy. And they had sex. But he had to do it standing up. So they did it, <laughs> so they did it in wow. a closet. <laughs> she sat there and told me this story, you know. So, <laughs> I, I, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's the narrative they're pushing, but, uh, if, I mean, in the end, it doesn't matter. It just matters what happens, you know, tomorrow. It's just like a ball game or whatever that Kevin and I would see, you know, where people talk about it for the entire week leading up to it or whatever, and in the end, none of it matters, you know, except what what happens when it gets played so well you know i don't see that debating is the proper way to figure out who you want to see as president yeah you know i see that I as agree. a kind of non-starter yeah. it, it's yeah. a soundbite thing instead of like a depth in-depth knowledge of policy and <laughs> character yeah, analysis foreign policy. character yeah. analysis yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's how one can they handle of, each other you know, yeah one of many things i guess Character analysis on television. I mean, I, in the end, you know, people's votes are their own, and they can use whatever 
criteria they deem fit, you know, and who to vote for. So for some people, if that happens to be the debate, that's fine. I mean, I, I mean, like I said, I, I mean, Biden could he could fall asleep tomorrow during the debate. Wouldn't change my mind. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, I mean, would you rather have a person who nods off and isn't going to basically be a you know a fascist, or would you? Rather just have the fascist who stays awake. Well, I mean, you, when you, you just, well, when you want to talk about somebody who doesn't have it quite together, try Trump. I mean, come on, this guy's lost. He's a great. Uh, he's lost a great deal of his ability to even speak in the last four years. You know. Uh, uh, yeah, he does ramble on about stuff that I don't really understand yeah. you know i mean his followers do it's it's very yeah i don't very strange you know well i hope there are more of those moments like they were in the last yeah. biden uh, uh trump mashup where at one point uh, biden just looked at trump and said my god man shut up yeah that was great <laughs> i love that was my favorite moment in the debate and you know something if he does that again i think he'll win the whole thing because you just stand up to this bully. You don't let him just, you know. Uh, I mean, I think I, I think Biden saw that moment. If he goes back and looks at that old that old debate, he would look back at that moment and say, "That was probably the moment where I won the presidency." <laughs> you know, because yeah. I told this guy to shut up. Yeah. You know, mm. but. Uh, now, you got to stand up to bullies, okay. or they'll just run you over. Now, here's the wild card. I want to bring this up. You know, we have a Supreme Court that is giving out with all its, uh, you know, its decisions this week. And uh, the end of this week, I think, is the end of the Supreme Court term, isn't it? Uh, isn't it, uh, Josh? That's supposed to be, yeah. Yeah. So my question is, when are they going to make the decision about Donald Trump? And his desire to get uh, presidential immunity. Hopefully tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be tomorrow. No, thank I think it's going it's, to Monday. I, no, I think it's going to be Friday. And I'll tell you why. Wait. Because everybody is sitting there on the Supreme Court and doesn't want to affect the mm. uh, debate. And they're kind of trying to hold it off so it doesn't become a, a part of the debate. Because I think the decision is going to be he doesn't have a presidential immunity. I mean, it's insane for him to even think that he did. What, he can go murder somebody and then he's got presidential immunity? Well, that was the argument he made, yeah. Yeah. Well, somebody screwed up today and let something out on the uh, abortion thing, Oh, oh that, that, that was an... Well, <laughs> last two years ago, they let bro, the yeah. Roe Wade uh, thing uh, uh, leak out ahead of time. So who's doing that in that office, you know? Yeah. But anyway, so I mean, I, Oops. I, I'm betting you that it won't be tomorrow because that'll be in advance of the debate. It will be on Friday. Does that make sense to you, Josh, from what you know about this, mm -hmm. this Supreme Court with lack of ethics? Yeah, I mean, I would assume that they're thinking would be to just stay out of the fray and and release it after the fact yeah i mean it's still going to be before the election so i think their argument and i don't necessarily disagree with it would be that all that information will be out there for voters when they go to make their decision it doesn't necessarily need to be out there for tomorrow's debate i mean i would like to see it because i would like to see it be a loss and i would like to see him have to make that argument on on television in a debate you know, the same thing that he's been making about a president having to have immunity, and if they don't, they'll just sit there and do nothing and then not get it and have to be asked, so, you know, what do you have to say to that now? You know, so that he could ramble on like a clown for a while. That would be great. Yeah. But I could understand the court saying, let's not, you know, upset the news cycle and, and whatnot. Let's just keep to our schedule, keep to ourselves. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure that many of them would prefer to go back to a, a place of just doing their jobs and not living in this circus that Alito and Thomas have basically created for the other seven. 
you know, and I'm sure that that's mostly how it is. I mean, you don't see the other seven, for instance, acting mm -hmm. in, in a lot of these ways, you know. So I'm sure that basically one and a half to two people have completely, you know, made the lives of the other seven pretty bad and, and a lot harder than they need to be. So they're probably saying, let's not do something like they would do. Let's just... Well, I, uh, let, me, let me ask Josh this. Josh, how can we get rid of Supreme Court justices? They have to be impeached, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, through the congressional process, you know, so your options are pretty limited. I mean, because I don't really see that ever happening. I mean, other than that, you don't really have a... Because, I mean, you've got a couple of guys here in Alito and in uh, Thomas yeah. who just have the idea, you can't tell me what to do. I'm a Supreme Court justice, and I can do anything <laughs> I goddamn please. Uh, yeah. Almost the same attitude that Trump had with presidential immunity. You know, and, and yeah. you have to, you not only have to act in a decent manner, you have to act in a decent manner that gives people uh, a, a sense of, uh, of uh, believing in the court. And people mm -hmm. don't believe in the Supreme Court anymore. Mm. Yeah, it's, it, their reputation is hurting very badly, no doubt. Yeah. Which, again, as I said, I'm sure upsets, you know, the other seven for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think it does, right? I mean, you know, Chief Justice Roberts, you know, has never acted like a fool and, and done these things. He's been a very respectful person over the years. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I certainly think that the justices, a lot of this people on, you know, this channel and this panel like, you know, Sotomayor and Justice Kagan, etc., very respectful people. They at times have gotten a little snippy because the others have, you know. So that's fine. It's a little normal, but nothing really but even, out even, of even out the, of the one, ordinary. Even the ones that Trump put on the yeah. Supreme Court have turned out to be at least decent yeah, I mean, in their demeanor. So, okay. Justice Kavanaugh, and listen, I'm separating his time on the bench and that specific activity from the other stuff, right? But during that time has you know, seemingly kept to himself and put out his opinions. He surprised him a few times. You know, uh, Justice Barrett seems like a nice lady before, still seems like one. I've read a lot of inside stories the last few weeks that say that she's very aggravated with Alito and Thomas, specifically Thomas, because she thinks that his judicial philosophy, even though a lot of people thought hers was agree would agree with it, is you know, off the map, you know, and she's apparently been trying to work very hard to push him out or, you know, be a force against him, mm. you know, so, but quietly, she's a very respectful lady. Justice Gorsuch seems like a nice guy. I've seen him in a lot of interviews. Um, I've watched several of his speeches. Uh, I sat through a symposium or two that he was at uh, where... He was the keynote speaker. I mean, he's a sensible person. I mean, if you don't agree with him, you know, I think that's what we got. We got to separate, you know. And that's what I'm saying. Some of Alito and Thomas's activities and actions at times, and even some of the stuff in their opinions, you know, a borderline on the tantrum, you know. Yeah. And that's when I think it gets, you, you know, ridiculous. I mean, it's you know, wah wah wah. Yeah, I mean, come on, you know, and that's what I'm saying is the other seven are like, could we just do our business here? You know, so we right. just put up our opinion, stick to our jobs. And, you know, I don't really think they wanted to be politicians. Right. And be on. I mean, they would have ran for public office. This is this is high office without all the high office crap, you know, I mean, they're yeah. Supposed to yeah. Go in and sit in their chambers, you know, so, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, again, I, I just think that the, the way in which elections are happening now are just so disrespectful of the whole process that we do look upon a debate like we look upon a wrestling match, you know? And I just, uh, I just think it's time we started to turn ourselves around a little bit and respect the process. But I think as long as you've got a guy like Trump, a goofy guy like Trump in the in the mix, it's never going to happen because he's going to turn it into a circus because that's yeah. the only thing he knows how to run. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 
It's going to be, I think it's, gonna, it's just going to be the Trump show. You know, his own little uh, reality show that he could uh, show to the nation. Well, yes, until they turn off the mic. Right. <laughs> in, at which point, I bet he's still talking. I, I'll bet in a lot of cases, you'll look over there and he's still going at it. <laughs> you have to use a super directional mic just to keep him out of it. Well, they will have to have very directional mics, like this new mic of mine. Is the directional yeah, I, mic. I think he's going to still bleed over a little bit. He'll what be in mic the background. Did you get? Huh? What mic did you get? I got a, uh, uh, a thing called a, it's a, it's a uh, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the people who make the, uh, the Logitech. It's a Logitech. Oh, okay. It's a Logitech Brevo or something like that. It's, oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Very good mic. Expensive, Sounds but good. Sweet. Huh? Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I it's been a long time since I bought myself really allowed myself to buy a, a really decent microphone. Because I don't <laughs> care about microphones all that much. My voice didn't depend upon what mic I was talking into. It only depended upon my voice, you know. Yeah. So it's just all these people who, who are doing podcasts who want the best mic they can buy, and they like to show it to you, too. Like, you never yeah. see mine because it's, uh, it's in the, uh, you know, it, it, see, I could do that if I wanted to. Oh, wow. Right. But, you know, I, I don't do that. Mine is right here. Yeah. I just use the old-fashioned SM58. SM57. Oh. sounds great. Yeah. It sounds great. And I, the, I, I discovered you have to talk directly into the top for it to work right because it has a... Yeah, it has the, the the soundproofing thing. And before I was talking above it, and I was getting all these P's and S's. But if I talk right directly in, it sounds much better. Yeah, it took me two years to figure that out. Well, the best <laughs> mic I have is an Electro Voice. Uh, what was it, thirty five A? Yeah, that like. one's nice. Well, yeah. I mean, but the, those are know, expensive. But you know, no, you know how old that microphone is. Well, it's they they've been around for thirty or forty the, years. The hand microphone that most people used in news was this microphone. Yeah, the Electro Voice, what, uh, what is it, the number? I think it was a 30, a 635 or something like that. It was yeah, that's when all the radio stations used yeah, for well, years. Well, yeah. also, uh, they used them for doing the news because one thing you could do in a riot, mm. you could just hit somebody with them. <laughs> those they're those big ones and they have like a coil, they look like a whole coil no, no, on the no, top. No, 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 this is very thin with a little bulb at the top. Oh, I'm thinking if you, of something If you else. watch Frank Sinatra singing on the specials, he uses oh, one, one of those, those electro yeah. voice. And I bought the thing when I was 16 years old. Wow. And it you still, still it? works. Wow. That's and amazing. It was the first microphone I ever owned. Yeah, it still works. And it sounds pretty good. I should plug it in some night and let you hear the difference. You know? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it, it it was a very very good mm. uh, microphone, and uh, has really that one still it still works. And I've mm. I've actually painted it several times when we were doing Midnight Blue. We painted it blue, then I painted it black to being uh, silver. And uh, mm. you know, I mean, it's just a, a very usable mic that never seems to go out on you. But boy, that's great. Yeah. That's why I use the SM58. It's been around. And the SM57, the same thing. They've been around yeah. for so long, you can drop them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Good nothing mics. happens. So yeah. anyway, so anyway, I, I just decided ah, it's time for me to really spend money on a mic. I had the last mic I had cost me 75 bucks. You know, <laughs> the one before that was another 75 bucks. I just decided, you know, maybe you get something for the money. I don't know. But hmm. I, I think this one does sound better than I. Well, yeah. the one you had before sounded really good too. Yeah. But you have a you just have a good voice, so it doesn't matter really what you use. Well, That's what you just said. Yeah. 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 I guess All I. Those voice. Yeah, I guess I still have a good voice. <laughs> you do. You know, I don't think you sound any different than you did years ago. Well, when you did that good. radio show yeah, that's a couple good. years as, ago, it was the same. You get, as you get older, you start having a hard time. You know? Yeah, but you don't have that you going have on that. at all. Yeah. You don't have any of that. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess also because I do a show every night or a couple of nights a week. Yeah. Here, keep and, in shape. And it just keeps it in shape. Yeah. 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 So. 
<clears throat> That's but, pretty good. Anyway, so, you know, I mean, it, it, we're in a whole world of everybody looking upon everything as a reality show, you know? And, uh, and Trump is treating this like it's The Apprentice. Yeah. That's what he knows. <clears throat> you know, he's going to do what he knows. By the way, there's a movie we can't see because they're not releasing it in this country. And, in fact, it was made by an American called is The Apprentice. And it's about oh. the relationship between Roy Cohn and Donald Trump. Oh, my God. And it's supposedly a very good film, but there no... Uh, nobody in America wants to carry it. Nobody wants to distribute it. Mm. I think they're I just afraid of the repercussions. You know, <laughs> it was a con. Did very well at con. Uh, you know, had got a nice reception at con. It's and it's called The Apprentice. Yeah. Wow. Let's see when it comes out after the uh, debates, maybe. No, I don't think I, I. I quite frankly, I think it may come out once the election is over with. And then, what good is it? You know, everybody's interested in it is right now. So yeah, you know, I don't know what to say. But well, uh, I, I, I must have a hard time though believing that if they made, if somebody made a very disparaging movie about Joe Biden, that they that that it would make it onto the air. I feel like it would. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think everybody is a little afraid of Donald Trump because he's such a bully. And you don't let bullies get away with being a bully, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's terrible. But the fact that this movie is not being able to pick up a distributor in America, especially when it got pretty good reviews at Con, is beyond me. And I've been trying to see if anybody had a copy of it or whatever so I could look at it. Because I, I was always very interested in Roy Cohn because I met up with the son of a bitch once and debated him on radio. Mm. And, oh, wow. And uh, he was, I once described that I've never seen, I've never looked the devil in the face. But the night that I was with uh, Roy Cohn and he was sitting across the table from me, uh, that's the closest I've ever come to meeting up with the devil. Mm. I mean, he had these shark eyes that would just look at you and have no life in them whatsoever. <laughs> and this is the man who was Trump's mentor. Mm. I mean, it's wow. terrible. Just terrible. Wow, so, it won the top award at Cannes, like you said, the Palme d'Or. It, it didn't win the Palme d'Or, did it? What? Yeah. Point. Oh, nominee. It got nominated for it. it. Got nominated for it. Yeah. 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 Uh, the winner, of the Palm Door, I think, was uh, the, the film mm -hmm. by the guy who did Lag. Lag I can't remember his name now. Lagrathamos or something. Like, you know. Uh, but anyway, so uh, Kevin, what are your thoughts about tomorrow night? Anything? Yeah, just gonna watch, see what happens. Gee, you know, I can hardly. What is? I'm wondering what uh, MSNBC is going to have to talk about on Friday. I mean, except, oh wait a minute, <laughs> they will spend the whole day talking about what happened the night before. But next Monday, what will they have to talk about? Nothing. You know. I think the most important thing is each state that is going to have the numbers whether or not they're going to beat against Trump per state. That's the way it's all still organized, isn't it? Well, it's just still an electoral college, yeah. It's, yeah. you know, what happens is my vote in New York uh, gets uh, compressed and mashed in with all the other votes for 75 or 79 votes. 79 votes, that's it. And, and uh, that's what I hate about the Electoral College. I mean, I just think that if I vote for Biden, I would like to think my vote counts, but it doesn't count. If mm -hmm. I don't go to, you know, uh, a vote on, uh, on voting day here in New York City, it doesn't matter. Because Biden's going to take New York anyway, and it's still going to be the same 79 votes. 
you know. So, I don't know. I'm well, it, only if enough people don't also think that and they're not going to vote. Well, yeah, I don't think that many people are not going to vote in New York. But I'm saying that no matter how, how many vote in New York, the state is still going to be taken by Biden. It should be, but as long as people vote. Yeah, and but if, right. if I felt that my one vote was counted, I would then say, okay, it's good for me to vote in New York. Not good to vote in California either, mm -hmm. right? You're going to go yes. there, Ray. You're going to vote. Kevin, you're going to go vote. And I'll what, vote, but it's a, it's a given who's going to win. Yeah, it's a given <laughs> as to who's going to take, take, take the state of, uh, of, uh, of California. Which is fine. If I lived in <laughs> South Carolina, if I lived in uh, Ohio, for instance, you goddamn well better believe I'm going out and voting. <laughs> okay? Because that's critical. But, you know, I don't, am, I being, am I being too, uh, too blasé about this whole thing? Mm -mm. No. Yeah, well, the end of the day, a lot of people think like that, you, it may not happen. Right. Well, yeah. You get more and more people that get complacent like that, that's what happens. Well, I think if we got rid of the Electoral College, a lot more people would vote. Well, I, it has, it, we have to get rid of it. There's no question about it. And uh, uh, it, it doesn't look like we're going in that direction. We're still doing it. So it all becomes this game, this numbers game of who can mm -hmm. gerrymander, you know, the most states and so on. Uh, so, okay, so you've got Ohio, and Ohio votes for Trump, all right? But maybe only 40% of them or 50% of them vote for Trump, and Biden loses by a certain amount. The fact is that if you were just counting the sheer numbers, the whole game changes, mm -hmm. you know? And it becomes a more honest way you believe an American vote takes place. He who gets the most votes wins, not he who gets the most electoral votes wins. I mean, that's a, just a horrible way to, you know, get somebody to be president, so. Ridiculous. But, it didn't. It, maybe it made sense in 1776 or 1782 or whenever they decided, but it doesn't anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> and then there was this big lefty here in New York. I'm trying to remember his name. Barrowman. What was his name? Bar oh God, I'm trying to remember his name now. Who ran for uh, in the primary uh, to run again? He was a congressman from New York. Oh yeah. And he. Uh, was was up against a guy who had lots of money. He's a billionaire. Mm -hmm. And he just slaughtered him on TV with ads that were all basically lies. Oh, he hated Biden. He didn't vote for Biden. He hates Jews. I mean, it went on and on about this. And the fact was that none of it was true. It was all lies. <laughs> and he lost yesterday. So it shows that if you have enough money and you can put on a lot of airtime with ads that are probably complete and utter lies, you could win the election. Mm. It's pathetic. It's so bad. Absolutely pathetic. And this guy was, <sighs> well, the thing was the, the, the Democrats didn't like this guy because he was a real lefty, you know, uh, and uh, a, a harsh lefty. Uh, and and they didn't like that because even the Democrats don't like somebody who's too far to the left. You know, you got to be a nice lefty. Mm -hmm. You got to, you know. So that was the other big thing happening here. So um, hmm. so are you going to handicap this for us, uh, Josh? Or are you not going to handicap? <laughs> uh, tomorrow? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean... I mean, I, I hope Biden just holds up, you know, really well and has a good night to get through it, you know, because, you know, he, I mean, I worry about it a little bit. I mean, look, he does have some physical limitations and, you know, his speaking ability at times isn't, you know, as fast as Trump and things like that because he speaks a little slower and he's a little more, you know, he's not a little more, he's more measured and things like that. Well, it's more than so, that. It's more than that, Josh. <clears throat> 
we forget he has a stutter he has right. a stutter yeah. and yeah, so if he hesitates or he you know he's kind of bumbling around a little bit it's because of that stutter which as he's gotten older has come back yeah so i mean that's you know that's what i'm saying is he has some physical limitations but not you know not anything debilitating enough to remove him from being able to serve completely functionally as the president right so they don't matter to me but you know i just hope that none of them excuse me crop up you know in some sort of magnified way or moment that you know a five minutes span of time can ruin you know the future of this country you know because right. I just, I really see worldwide and specifically here that, you know, fascist tendencies are like, they're like coming back. Like, they're like yeah. getting popular again. They're getting more mainstream. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they really are. Yeah. And Trump is the leader of that. And so we need to squash it. And the easiest way to squash it is for him to lose and, you know, be out of this mix for years and that's that's what we need so you know i'm hoping that some sort of freeze up by biden or something doesn't happen and and ruin it because you know again i don't even care i mean even if a, a person does have those things i mean I've, I've worked with plenty of leaders who were great and not so great and their ability to walk or their ability to answer super fast and things it, it, it really it had nothing to do with their overall ability to lead, you know? So yeah. I don't know why people look at that kind of... Well, there's also an ageism that's going yeah. on here, too. Yeah. You know, right? I mean... Totally I, ageism. Well, I well that's mostly because people like Trump are bringing it up all the time. I don't think any, yeah. any other candidate would be bringing it up all the time. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't have... I don't think you would have another candidate making such a big stink about this Except for Trump. Yeah, yeah but I mean... Because there's more decent people around. There's yeah, nothing. I mean, and, and there are a few others who did, like Nikki Haley and those, but honestly, I really think that she only well, did yeah, it, they're or they only the did it, group. because Trump was doing it, and they right. were trying to appeal to his right. people, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. At any other time and in any other place... I mean, you might hear it mentioned or whatever, but I think most people would be like, meh, meh I just want, you know, my uh, paycheck. I don't remember a campaign know? before this where yeah. people were calling each other names and talking about how they walked funny or, or you know, yeah. I don't remember a campaign like that. Even even no. back, you know, back in the day, no, yeah. 20 years ago, I don't remember any of that crap. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it may happen even the guys would debate. talk shit about each other, but they wouldn't say shit about that. Yeah, but we're also at a, t a time, place, and time where there's no, there's no decency. There's no filter, right. and, and that was Nothing. brought out in 2016. And we're, uh, it, all of this has started with Trump. I mean, yeah. even, even the worst uh, Republican who I can't stand, okay, uh, doesn't. What happened to? Uh, we just lost uh, Steve. Um, uh, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, with all that, you know, we 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 need deep, more decency, more. Uh, we were a lot more decent. I mean, if we go back. Okay, the point I was going to make, because I got all thrown off by Steve leaving. Uh, the thing that I uh, uh, that that kind of bothers me is that we 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 are not in any way. I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> That was strange. <laughs> hey, it's been a bad day for me that way today. Well, Paul, it's just the the things that are being made out like they matter to people are things that really shouldn't and never did before, like Kevin was saying. I mean, you know, if your parents walk that way or whatever, you know, like mine do, and people were making fun of them for their weight or for their way they walked or or for whatever, I mean, you know you would not be happy about that. You know, matter of fact, you might even say something, you know, and matter of fact, it might even escalate. Well, would you say that what's, what they're doing with tr Trump is ageism? What's that? Would you say that what they're doing to Trump is ageism? 
what they're doing to Trump, I don't think so. I think I mean, what, you, what they're doing yeah. to Biden is ages. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, right. Absolutely. I mean, because like I said, it has no. The way that you walk has no bearing on being able to decide, you know, defense policy or whatever. I mean, it, you know, what I'm saying it, it doesn't it, it, it doesn't matter, you know. And I mean, there are plenty of people in this country that have issues like that. Um, you know, and, you know, I don't walk very well at times, you know, because I have some issue and it's going to get a lot worse. What's that got to do with anything? Well, I have a problem with sure. uh, certain drugs I'm taking that make it a little more difficult for me to have a, a complete thought here. Yeah. You know, like I just lost my whole train of thought there. It's a perfect example. Yeah. But it doesn't mean I can't still do the job, mm -hmm. you know. And, it, it, you know, I don't think there's anything about Biden that shows to me that he's too old for the job. In fact, right. people who work with him say he's amazingly adept at what he's doing. Yeah. And he's amazingly knowledgeable. You know, this is a guy who has been doing the job for well, how well, many years now? 40 to almost 50 years. Whole adult life. Yeah. And and you you know if you if you want somebody to run for president who who uh, has the experience, mm -hmm. then Tr Biden's your guy. Trump has no experience. Oh yeah, he was president. I forgot he yeah. didn't wasn't ever a serious president. So he, you know, he he well, never he got any experience out of that. He never learned anything from being president. No. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I mean, what I do, what I prefer that Biden were exactly who he is and was 56 and would bounce up the steps at the D-Day memorial with um, Emmanuel Macron? Sure, I would. But that's not that's not what we have. So we have to make our decision. I mean, this is what we have. I mean, yeah, of course, everyone would prefer that, right? I mean, even when a, a big company hires somebody, I mean, do they want the guy who's like 65? Well, you know, I'm just kind of looking to do out my last couple of years. Or do they want the 20-year-old that just got out of college that they don't have to pay? I mean, yeah, of course, right? Well, you know, I mean, you can take well, Trump and you can say, hey, he named his doctor wrong. Yes. You know, he, uh, uh, remember when he was walking down that ramp, he had to be helped? Yeah. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. didn't he look doddering there? Come on, all the things that he accuses Biden of, he can equally be accused of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you well, hear Biden you know. saying that? No. No. Right. No. Biden doesn't do that sort of thing. Biden I'm, is a gentleman. He doesn't call names. He doesn't make fun of people. I mean, you know, if the Democrats at this, off, if, if the Democrats at this point right. in our history uh, have anything wrong with them, is this we're the Democrats are too nice. Yeah. You know? Uh, uh, just oh, too nice, and and uh, uh, they would never stoop to the kind of things that Trump stoops to. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I right. Oh, go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead. We've got a bunch of guys who occasionally take a look at Fox. Well, what are they saying these days? I don't. I don't look oh, I look at them. Fox occasionally, and they're you know, it's like you go over there. It's Bizarro World. Yeah, you know, I ran most of the day today, and it was same old stuff. Yeah, but it, isn't it like thing. isn't it like Bizarro World? Yeah, it's, it's like up is down and down is up, and uh, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. you know how he got he got lost in France and he wandered away from the group picture. Yeah, all that, and he didn't. You know, no. He, what he, happened he, was he turned around and was talking to other paratroopers correct. in the back off, that nobody off was camera, paying. but. They didn't show the guys off camera. They just showed him where it looked like he was looking out into space. You know. No, well, I mean, also, he had the decency to talk no. to a bunch of the paratroopers who nobody was paying attention to because yeah. they weren't in the front. You know, and he turned around and started talking to them. And you know what's terrible is even after it was released, that the full video where you could see the paratroopers, the uh, mm -hmm. Janine Perro or whatever Pero, her name is. Pero. Fox, yeah, she was still touting this bullshit about excuse my language about um him talking to 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 nothing yeah uh i i saw her i couldn't believe it it was incredible yeah, and you know she knows the truth yeah no she doesn't care they don't care they're just they just lie well fox has this fox has this whole bizarre world they live in 
Mm -hmm. And everything is, it, none of it, it makes much sense, you know, but they, they uh, go ahead and go, everything's bad about Biden, nothing, everything's good about Trump, period. Right. Forget mm -hmm. it. Well, they, they pay those people so much money, they'll sell their souls, they don't care. Oh, Because they're making they, they millions and millions of dollars. Absolutely sold their souls. Yeah. No question about it. I mean, Between I would them and Newsmax, me. they're just... Yeah, I would, I would be fine if Biden would embrace a little bit more his situations, and they would come at it a little more forcefully, or whatever, you know, and and just say, you know, listen, I I know how the world works, and and I understand history well, and you know, listen, you know, Churchill was old and and fat, and he walked around slow, and he mumbled to himself a lot when people couldn't understand him, and he yelled at people for no reason. And he drank all day long from morning until night. And oh, by the way, he took a nap every day in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, th these are facts. Yeah. You know? And people can function that way perfectly fine if that's their way. It may not be the healthiest way mm -hmm. or the way that you think they should or, you know, whatever. But that's if that's how someone is. I mean, he should just say, yeah, you know, I don't walk as well. I'm a little old, but I'm working for the American people and for our government, round well, the clock. Well, I'll tell you, you though, if the Democrats lose this election, it's going to be because they have not gone out and sold the truth. In other words, the truth is the economy is better than mm -hmm. it has been in years mm -hmm. right now, at this moment. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe it doesn't affect you at the supermarket, but that's not our fault. That's the fault of people who want to take advantage of your feeling that things are bad, yeah. you know, and they want to charge you more for the meat that you buy, yeah. you know. So a lot of things are stabilizing. You know. Crime is down. Inflation is at three percent, which, which uh, is where uh, it should uh, be, uh, even uh, though it went up. Too. How about uh, how about uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the um, um, See? yes, uh, Alan. No, I, I just. I agree, and uh, sorry I was late. Uh, I was out with Phil Meyer, had dinner, and... Well, that's no excuse. Yeah, well, you know, mm. I watched the Friday show, and it's good to be remembered. The first thing that was said was your new microphone, and I thought it was funny when Josh said, now Alan will be able to hear you. And at the end of the show, uh, Tom Yamaguchi made a comment about no printers, and, and Alex said... Oh, that's because Alan's not here. Of course, if you go listen to the show before, Alex was talking about the printers first, so it was cute. Anyway, and, uh, yeah, I'm and confused. At, at, least, at least I'm not. Well, watch Friday's show. Okay. And so it was. It was good <laughs> that I'm, I, I get remembered. Well, we have to. We are expecting these people to do homework because of something you just said. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. I don't know. I was. Anyway. I was just saying that I, I enjoyed the show last Friday. I wasn't on it, but I was mentioned uh, at the first of the show and at the end of the show. It was kind of... And your ego loved every moment of it. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> anyway hey, listen, I'm playing the theme now. I have to tell them that because they can't hear it. Uh, so, something that Zoom does that prevents music from being heard. I, I heard on right. Friday on the pot, when, I, when I watched Friday after the fact. Yeah. You can, yeah, you can hear it on YouTube, but you can't hear it when yeah, you're right, live. Exactly. Oh, okay. Anyway, I really want to thank everybody who joined us tonight. A uh, little pre-game. Uh, I uh, When I said they said I, uh, over on uh, MSNBC, oh, please join us for the preview tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And I looked over at Marjorie and went, oh, they're doing a red carpet? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, pregame show. Yeah, everyone will be there. <laughs> everyone who's anyone. Thank you, Kevin. Really love having you here as usual. And this, Josh, always a pleasure when we get you on a day other than the ones you normally come on with. Uh, Charlie Wallace, I don't know. He's probably still on the phone. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, Jeff, thank you. Thank you to Ray, you and of course. Thank you to Alan for coming on, at least for a couple of minutes. We appreciate it. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, folks. Okay, there they go. There we go. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, that's uh, our program for now. 
Uh, next will be the lovely Amy Manuel, who will be doing her program, uh, taking your calls at on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.